Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you what we mean by a commutative frequency table and from that table how we draw a commutative frequency curve and then go on to estimate the median, the quartiles and the interquartile range. Now suppose we had the heights of 50 students say where their height is given in centimeters and we've got a group frequency table here and it's important to remember what we mean by this dash here. Take for instance this row where we've got 165 with a dash to 175. What does that mean? Well it's equivalent to saying that the height, let's call it H, is greater than the lower bound which is the 165 but less than or equal to the upper bound of 175. So we have 21 people for instance that have a height greater than 165 centimeters but less than or equal to 175 centimeters. When we come onto this row we'd have a height where 13 people are greater than 175 centimeters but less than or equal to 185 centimeters. Okay, so that's just briefly then what this means. Now, we need to talk about commutative frequency, what it means. Now, commutative frequency, we have another column here. What it is, is that it tells us how many people are less than or equal to a particular height and that particular height is always the upper bound of each of these classes. So for instance we know that three people have a height greater than 145 centimeters but less than or equal to 155. So we just put the three in here and we know that three people have a height less than or equal to this upper bound of 155. Now when it comes on to how many people have a height less than or equal to this upper bound of 165, well it is the total, the cumulative total of the 3 and the 9. In other words, 12 people have a height less than or equal to 165 centimeters. Now, we don't normally put these values in here, the less than or equal to. So in other words, when you come to how many people are less than or equal to 175, it will be a total of 21, the 9 and the 3, which comes to 33. So we'd normally just put 33 there. It's up to you though whether you want to put the less than or equal to 175 in. For the next value, how many people are going to be less than or equal to 185? Will it be the cumulative total of 13, 21, 9 and 3? Which comes to 46. And finally, how many people less than or equal to 195 centimetres? It's going to be a total of all of these, 50. And it's always a good idea to make sure that you check that you get the total of all your frequencies, okay? It should be that total. Now, we need to set up a graph to plot these values. So what we do is we set up some axes and we have the height here, make sure you label it, okay? Otherwise you're likely to lose marks. We've got the height in centimeters going from 145, that's our lowest value, right the way up to our greatest value of 195 centimeters. And then we have this axis, the vertical axis, which is always commutative frequency. And in this example, the commutative frequency, well, it will always go from zero and it goes up to our maximum value of 50. All right? And now we need to plot our points on. 
And we start with this point here. We start with 3 and 3 values are less than or equal to 155. So we need to come up to the 155 and go to 3. Well they're going up in units of 2 here so that would be 3 there. And we always plot this one here. We've got the bottom, the lower limit here, 145. We know that nothing is, there's no students less than 145 centimeters. So we can put a point there. For the 12, we would plot that there were 12 students less than or equal to 165. So we go up to 165 and plot our 12 in. All right. And we'll do the same for the other points. And if we did, we'd have the points looking like this. And it finishes on that 50 up there. So you can see we've got a curve looking something like this. And generally they do. Okay, look like that. They'll never go down again. They always rise like this. And what we've got to do is join them up with a smooth curve. And that curve will look something like that. Now once we've got our curve drawn, what we can do now is estimate what the median is. And to do that, we go halfway up the commutative frequency axis. Okay, Halfway up, for our case here, will be the 50 values here, which will be 25. So we go to 25, which is going to be a point here. And you've got to be very careful because in some questions they might give you the axes and let's just suppose the top number here was 60. Make sure you don't take 30. It's going to always be half the value you've got here. Okay. So we go along from the 25 along till we meet the curve which will be about here and then we project down like so. All right. And this value that we've got here will be our estimated median. So we've got that the median and the symbol that some people use for this is Q2, the second quartile. And what that value is on this graph is 172. So our estimated median is 172 centimeters. Let's just put the units in there. Now when it comes to finding the quartiles, then for the quartiles, the lower quartile, we have to go a quarter of the way up this axis, a quarter of 50. And that will give us the position. What is a quarter of 50? Well, it's 12 and a half. So we just go to 12 and a half, which is about here. And then we draw a line across, hit the curve, project down, and there's our lower quartile. It's just going to be a little bit more than the 165. It looks to be about 165.1 from here. So the lower quartile, just write that in, the lower quartile. Can you guess what uh, value we use in terms of Q for the lower quartile? Well, it's got to be Q1. And so I'm estimating it's going to be 165.1 centimeters. So that's that estimate. What we've got to do now is work out the upper quartile. And for the upper quartile, we use the symbol Q3, the third quartile, upper quartile. So we've got to go three quarters the way up for the 50. So three quarters of 50 gives us 37.5. We've got to find the 37.5th value up here. So we've got 30, 32, 4, 6, 37.5, about here, okay? 
So we project across, hit the curve and then come down. And looking at this, it looks to be 176. So we'll have that as 176 centimeters. So we've got our median and lower and upper quartiles. And once you've got these values, you can go on to find an estimate for the interquartile range. And the interquartile range is the difference between the quartiles, the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So we'll just write this in here, the interquartile range. It equals Q3 minus Q1. So for us, this is going to be 176 then minus the 165.1. So what do we get? Well, it turns out to be 10.9, 10.9 centimeters. That's this channel in here, okay? Is going to be ha have a width of 10.9 centimeters. Now the interquartile range is a very useful value because it tells us the width of this gap here. It tells us the spread of data about the central value here, the median. It's well worth noting that we've got 50% of our data values lie in this interval here. If it was a smaller width, there would still be 50% of our values in this channel here. So the smaller the width, the more compact the data is about the median. So I hope that's given you some idea then on how to sketch your commutative frequency curves, the meaning that we have with this dash, okay, and uh, how we find the lower quartile, upper quartile, medians, etc., okay, and the interquartile range.